Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be covering creating a fidget spinner using OpenSCAD. Whereas this has been covered to death with uh, fidget spinners created, I decided that this made a good educational example for the fidget spinner. It just covers some of the great, some of the basic uses of OpenSCAD, uh, like hull and scale. It also has a for loop and also has rotate. So I thought it was a really good basic introduction to OpenSCAD. So I decided to go ahead and proceed, even though there's thousands of them out there. So I hope you enjoy, and we'll get started. So we, st we start out in OpenSCAD with a new model, and we're going to add a cylinder at the center. And the cylinder at the center is going to be what is later on removed for the skate bearing. Um, so that's the standard skate bearing is 22 millimeters. So I'm putting in a variable here that later on I'll put it at the top and set it equal to 22. We only want it divided by 2 because we're working with a radius here. So we want the full diameter to be 22. And its height is going to be 11 because we want it a little bit larger than the rest of the model because we're removing it. And with OpenSCAD, you don't want, when you do removals, you want the removal to be a little bit larger. So here I'm entering the bearing and it's going to be 22 units, which in our case is going to be millimeters. And um, so then we'll be able to render the, the, the cylinder representative of the skate bearing and there it is. So next I'm going to add the, so a cylinder that represents the hub of the, of the, of the spinner. And this is an arbitrary size. I, I added five to the size of the of whatever bearing we're gonna have. And that was that's arbitrary. You can make that whatever you want. Of course, it's gotta fit in your hand. And the height is eight, and that's the height of a skate bearing. So that's gonna be our final height. And that's so that you know the skate bearing can be grabbed on either side. And um, so I've added so I've added the hub for the skate bearing, and now I'm gonna be adding a cylinder that's gonna be offset to create the arm. So you could use different shapes for this. You could put a cube or a star or whatever you like, you know, whatever kind of weird shape you might like. You could even uh, do a polygon uh, in, a, in, the t in OpenSCAD 2D and extrude it. So you'll see I created another variable called arm distance, and this is the distance that will go off in the X direction, and you see it's rendered there now in the X direction. And then finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use hull to create the final, ar the, the full arm shape. So hull just joins two shapes. I don't know exactly how the math works, or I don't think that's appropriate for this, for this tutorial. But you'll see how it joins these two. It creates a hull out of these two shapes. So with the hull, now I'm going to subtract the center bearing from the full shape using difference. So difference subtracts the first from the first child, any children after that. So in my case, the first child is the hull, and I'm subtracting the cylinder, and you see that it's been subtracted. So now I'm copying this cylinder, and I th I'm going to be making two more cylinders that will be later scaled to remove some material from either side of the arm. So I'm going to be using half the arm distance to get it, to get it where I want. I think half the arm distance. Yep. And, or a third, yeah, I think I'm gonna use a third of the arm distance to get it where I want. And then I'll be copying this to create one on either side of the arm. And we'll let that catch up. So I'm grabbing the translate, and that'll be the, the arm distance. So I've made the cylinder a third of the size of the arm, and now I'm going to translate it halfway or a third down the arm. And you'll see how that works out when we do it. So one of, the, one of them is going to be um, two units above Y. And one of them is going to be two units below Y. <laughs> or above X and below X. So I need to make... I made a mistake trying to make it negative Z. That doesn't make any sense. I'm working in the X, Y plane mostly. So I'll set that to Z and make the Y translate a negative. So now it's uh, half the arm distance down. Okay, 
So now we have the two pieces, and yes, I know what that looks like. Um, you're sick. So now that I have the two uh, things I'm going to uh, subtract, I'm going to scale them because I, I don't want just a, a, a circular removal. I want a swooped removal. So I'm going to scale them in the x direction too. So that's what so that's what'll end up getting removed. So now it doesn't look like you thought it was. And now I'm going to difference out that scaled object. So here again. We're differencing the first child, which is the contained difference command. We're differencing that, and what we're removing is the second child, the scale command. And you'll see that that's now removed. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is, I believe I'm going to be adding a, um, a cutout for the, for the weight. And we'll be adding, I believe, a new... Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So, we'll, so this will be the radius of the weight, and we're going to be setting it to um, to be six sided using the fn com command variable. So fn is face numbers or face numbering, face numbers, and I'm going to be creating a variable called weight faces to make that configurable. So the weight size is will be the overall size of it. Um, and then the weight faces will be the number of faces. So say you have a square nut with four sizes, you could set in four, set it to four faces. Or maybe if you have um, five-sided nut or six-sided nut, you can set it however you want. So th that's how you use parameters in OpenSCAD is it, it allows you to make your model a little bit more flexible. So I have my weight size and I think I, oh, and I've got to move it to the end instead of just a third of the way in. And I'll be doing that in a second. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do another difference in this remove space. And once again, what you have is you have the difference command. The first child, which is this, ne which is the next difference, minus the second child, which is the translate. And so you see how it translated it. And now i got to move it to the end instead of to a third of the distance. And that's what you got to be careful with, with copying stuff. So we're getting there. We're almost done. So I'm gonna next. I'm going to add another cylinder that's going to subtract out a little bit of area where the weight is, and that's just so you can see the weight from either side. But it's but it has a little ledge to so that it stays in place. And if you ever printed this, um, you'd probably want to glue that weight in place. This cylinder doesn't need uh, five six sides, so we're going to make just uh, remove the FN, and then you'll see I'm going to add a global. Uh, FN to smooth out the whole model. So I'm going to move uh, move that cylinder in the negative Z by one, so that leaves just uh, one unit of material to hold the the weight in place. And you can see that there. And now I'm going to add the um, I'm going to add 50 faces to the global model. So and this is an important thing is you can set face numbering specific to a, a uh, an individual object and you can set it for the whole model. So you see I've set it for the whole module. At this point now I'm going to turn this whole code into a module itself. So I'm going to use the module command and spinner arm is going to be the name of my module. I encase the whole thing in brackets and I tab it over to make it look nice. And now I'm going to call spinner arm. So with, with module you'll see there's nothing drawn until I actually do the call for the spinner arm and there's my spinner arm back. And he's there, it's gone, and there it's back. So now I'm going to put the spinner arm into a loop because I'm going to, after this, I'm going to rotate it around three times. So I'm going to create a loop. I is my counting variable, and I have a start point of one, a step point of one, and an end point of num arms. So I'm going to be adding a num arms variable in a second, and I'm going to set it to three for my model. And I think I had an extra piece of something in there was why it, comp oh, it compiled because no, it didn't compile because num arms was nothing it was null so num arms is three so there's actually three arms now but they're all over uh, covering each other over so I'm going to rotate them and rotate takes a an array or a vector and it's going to be uh, it's going to be rotated zero on the x zero on the y or around the x and around the y and then it's going to be rotated i times 360 divided by num arms. So that's basically the first time through it's 1 times 360 divided by 3. And then it's 2 times 360 divided by 3. And you see what that does. It gives us each arm at the correct angle. 
So that's pretty much it. So now I'm just going to review. So that, that's our center hub. That's our weight hub or weight cylinders. And here's the material removed for the bearing. And here we have the two, uh, the material removed for the, um, just the, 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 to improve the look of the object. And you can make those whatever shape you wanted to and remove them. And then here we have the material removed for the weight and the material removed for to visually to give it a better visual appear. So that's my video and I hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you like these, make sure you subscribe and like my channel. And also, if you want to uh, be notified of more, click the alarm bell. And thanks. Have a great day.